what is up guys paradoxio here welcome back to a brand new video everybody today i'm going to be showing you all how we can convert our python file into a normal executable or exe file now essentially uh at the bare basics what this does is it allows us to actually run or open and run our program without the need of visual studios code to compile it at all and run it from there or uh, any other code compiler that you use. Um, we do not need that when we are working with exe files. So in this short video, I'm going to be showing you all how we can uh, convert our Python file into an exe with the use of a tool called PyInstaller. Now before we get into that, I did want to take a moment to apologize for the lack of uploads in the past few weeks. Um, this is due to me just having a job uh, outside of my channel, and I've just been very busy with that lately. But I've also built a brand new computer, which if you're interested in the specifications of it, you can view them on my uh, About section on my channel. Um, I have a pretty good system now, so expect some higher quality videos from then on. But uh, I just haven't got all my recording uh, tools and software set up just yet. So uh, this is also another reason why I haven't uploaded recently. But I am back and I'm hopefully going to get into the swing of things again. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get into our tutorial. So I already have my little program here inside this folder here. But uh, that's not important yet, because what we need to do is actually install PyInstaller. And to do that, if you're on Windows, you just need to hit the Windows and R key. And then inside this prompt that says open, just type in CMD and click OK or hit enter on your keyboard. And you should see something like this. Uh, if you've been on my channel for a while now, you know what this is. This is not new to you. It's all old news. But uh, essentially, you probably guessed it. We're going to go ahead and pip install something today. And we're going to go ahead and pip install PyInstaller, which can be done with this simple message here. Uh, after that, we can just hit enter. And uh, in my case, I already have it installed, so that's why I'm getting this message here. Uh, if you haven't installed it yet, you will receive a much different message. If you have received a message that says pip cannot be found or it's not a batch command, what you need to do is reinstall Python and go through the entire uh, installation process and make sure that uh, install pip or add pip is checkmarked and installed from there. So uh, if you don't um, have a pip command in here, uh, just make sure uh, your Python is installed correctly. But uh, other than that, if you have installed it, you're good to go. We can go ahead and close this window. And we just need to navigate to our program here. Now, uh, as you can see, all this is is just my uh, main.py file. And we're actually going to open it and go to Visual Studio's code for a second. Because there is another thing I wanted to mention uh, before we actually convert our file here. Now, um, for much larger programs, obviously not something as large as this. Uh, it's a very small program. All that happens is if I run it, it just opens up a GUI. It says, hello world, and a nice little message at the bottom you guys should totally listen to um, while we are converting our file here now. So uh, it's a very small program in my case. But for your case, you might have a very large program that, or project that you just finished and you really want to make it into an executable file. But the thing with that is with very large programs, they can become very unstable and crash at any time or freeze up. And obviously that is not something that we want with our projects. So um, a thing we can do to actually go around this is using a Python library called multiprocessing. And uh, specifically, it's freeze support uh, method. Now, what that does is it essentially allows the program to continue running even if it froze for a split second or two. And uh, instead of closing the program and opening it up again and then repeating the process, it'll just wait for the program to respond and uh, you will be good to go from there. So all we need to do is just go ahead and import multi processing 
Now keep in mind there's two of them, one with an underscore in the front and uh, one without. Uh, we want to use the one without an underscore, so this is the right one we want to use. And uh, since I am doing this in an object oriented manner, in my if main equals or if name equals main statement, uh, before I go ahead and declare the app object or my app, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and type in multi processing dot freeze support like that, and then I'm done. Now, of course, if you're not uh, using Tkinter or uh, programming with Tkinter in an object-oriented manner, all you need to do is just make sure this line is typed before your main loop line. Or if you're not working with Tkinter at all, you just might want to add this at the very last line of your code uh, when it's all compiled and running. So that way, if it does freeze up, uh, it will still respond eventually. So uh, that is all we really needed to do. Now I can go ahead and exit this and uh, I can just show you, it doesn't really do much on the surface, but uh, in the background, it is just having that uh, last fail safe uh, to make sure that if it stops responding, it will not close or crash. So that's all we needed to do. Now we can go ahead and close our Visual Studios code and we can go ahead and start making this into an executable file. Now, uh, the first thing uh, I need to do is I need to open up my command prompt inside this directory specifically rather than uh, typing in CMD in my run. So to do that, all I need to do is just go here where my directory is uh, found, highlight all of it, and just type in CMD and then hit enter. Now what this does is it essentially just opens the same command prompt but only in this directory, so we can access files and configure them inside this directory only. Uh, if you didn't know that you can do that, well, now you do. It is actually a really good helpful tip uh, to know and keep in mind when programming that you can open up uh, command prompts this way. So uh, if you just now learned that today, it's a pretty useful tip, I would keep it in mind. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and actually make our executable file now. So to do that, we just need to type in pi installer, then the name of our file, and then two little scopes here that will essentially uh, tell our pi installer um, tool uh, what to do when making our file. So first thing I'm going to do is going to type in hyphen hyphen or dash dash, and then I'm going to type in one file just like that and then space, and then we're going to type in dash w. Now what the one file does is it essentially uh, compacts everything into one singular executable file, while this dash w uh, opens the program without opening the console. So if I were to remove this and press enter, it'll make my executable file, but when I run it, it'll also open up the console, which could be pretty annoying for most users. So this essentially just stops it from opening up the console by adding that dash W at the end. But uh, once you have all of this here, that is basically it. We can just go ahead and press enter and Pi Installer will begin to do its thing. And as you can see, if you look here in our directory, it starts making all of these files and folders that we need. Um, don't worry too much about uh, what you're seeing here. It is not too important. Uh, as you can see, mine has already completed pretty quickly because I have a very small uh, program. Of course, the larger your program is, uh, the longer it's going to take. And this works with any type of Python project that you're working with, as long as you have the file configured correctly. So uh, the larger your project is, the longer it might take. For me, it only took a few seconds. For you, it might take a couple of minutes even. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and close this uh, program because we already have the message that it was completed successfully. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this window and then we're going to talk about what we have so far. So we have four things here, two folders and two files. Obviously our main.py file because that's the source code file. And we had this spec file. Now the spec file isn't really too important. It just has some data that uh, the exe file can use in order to function properly. So these two files we don't need to worry about anymore, but I would still keep them. But what's important is our dist and build folders. Now inside our dist folder is our uh, main.exe file itself. 
Now keep in mind, if uh, your exe file is accessing other uh, files on your computer, you need to make sure those files are inside this dist folder along with your main.exe file, otherwise it will not scope them correctly and your um, main.exe file will eventually crash because it has ran into an error and can no longer function. So that is just something that you want to keep in mind. Make sure all your needed files are also in this disk folder here. But uh, for the build folder, uh, it's nothing too important. All it does is contains all of our uh, needed libraries that our uh, Python file has. And it's uh, not really much. This warn main.txt is just a txt file containing all of the errors that uh, PyInstaller had run into. So it's essentially like a crash report, but not really. Uh, that's not too important for our case at the moment, but uh, everything else uh, is just there for our exe file to uh, run correctly. So we can go ahead and go back to my program, go back to dist, and if we just click on this, it will work. So I'm gonna double click on it. It'll take a couple of seconds, uh, depends on how large your program is again. But as you can see, our app works just fine. Everything is working as intended. It says hello world up here. And a nice little subscribe to Paradoxial message at the bottom, which you guys should definitely listen to. We're almost at a thousand guys. I know you've been really wanting that face reveal. So if you really want it, you better subscribe. But uh, anyways, uh, that's not important at the moment. But uh, as you can see, our uh, executable file works normally. Of course, you can also click on it, right click, and you can run as administrator, uh, which will just uh, give you a little uh, message here. You can click yes, and it'll work normally. And then um, we can just come here, right click, open, and it'll work normally as well. So uh, that is basically it for this video. Um, basically, just keep in mind, if you have your program accessing any other files, make sure it's also in this dist folder. Just move them in here and it'll work. But uh, other than that, that is how we can easily and quickly convert our Python file to an exe. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers, guys. And if you've had ran into any issues uh, while watching this video, whether it be with your code or uh, with converting your files, uh, be sure to join my Discord server. We would all love to help you guys out with that. So, um, yeah, and we also have over 500 people in that server. So if you want to make any friends that share the same programming interests as you, that is another uh, great reason to join. The link will be in the description. But uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe, become a member today at only $2.99 a month, and also join my server. And uh, you guys, most importantly, have an amazing day, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.